uh, getting an easy defense of the title you just won, calling out pound for pound, arguably the best fighter in the world. I mean, you guys really are a league of your own as well. Uh, you are two fighters who dare to be great. Uh, that is refreshing. Two fighters in the same weight class. This is not a great smaller guy trying to fight a great bigger guy or a money grab where somebody just wants to go and fight somebody because they can end up making the biggest possible payday. These are two guys in their prime, 50 and all, undefeated, 40 knockouts, guys who can punch, guys who can box. This is really the best fighting the best. And for Mackie Garcia to dare to move up and win the world title in a four weight class is exactly what the LA Times wrote last week. Garcia looking to make history against Lipinets. And I think they were spot on. But what they miss is that Sergei Lipinets is here to make history as well. Because he knows, he knows what a win over a legendary fighter like Mikey Garcia would mean to him and to his career. So we really are excited to bring this amazing fight, this amazing 140 pound world championship fight to you. It's actually going to be a night of 140 pounders. There's going to be the WBA world championship fight on the line as well. It's going to be the rematch between Ramses, Ramses Bartolini and Kirill Relic which was a terrific fight. Some felt it was a bit of a disputed decision. Both guys were on the canvas, and you're gonna see that as well. It's probably gonna be one of the biggest 140 pound nights I can remember, certainly in a long, in a long time. Uh, the fight will be taking place from the legendary Animal Dome. Uh, we hosted some huge fights there, some great toe-to-toe uh, -to -toe showdowns, and I know this will be no exception. Tickets are going on sale tomorrow at 12 o'clock Central Time, 10 o'clock Pacific Time. Please make sure you encourage your readers and listeners and viewers to get the tickets. Uh, tickets are starting at $20, so we do expect a huge, huge crowd, just like we've done for some of the other big fights we've done from the Alamo Dome. I'd like to acknowledge uh, and thank uh, our co-promoter for the event, uh, Tom Brown, uh, and his daughter Brittany as well. I've seen Brittany, I don't know if Tom is here, but I'd like to uh, acknowledge him and thank him for the opportunity to work with him and his terrific staff again. Uh, I'd like, of course, uh, to thank the man who makes it all happen. Uh, he is represented here by, by the Watsons, and that is my good friend, uh, Al Heyman. I'd like to acknowledge Corona as well uh, for the continued support of the sport of boxing. And now it is a pleasure for me to turn the microphone to my good friend, the president of Showtime Sports, Steven Espinosa. Thanks, Richard. Uh, it's no secret it's been a great year for boxing, and as we come to the end of the year, uh, you know, it's sort of human nature. There's a lot of people rushing to take credit for it. You know, all this talk of, of repositioning the sport, uh, repositioning, whatever that means. Boxing doesn't need repositioning. Uh, and if it did, you wouldn't go to the same people who were responsible for positioning it in the first place. No, boxing doesn't need repositioning. What it needs is good fights. Good, high quality, competitive fights. Fights like Santa Cruz Frampton and Thurman and Danny Garcia or Spence and Brook. Not fight cards where the B side on the televised card doesn't win a single round all night. That's not repositioning the sport. The only way to continue to elevate boxing to put boxing in the spotlight, to reposition it if you'd like, is to consistently do good fights. Consistently do good fights. And that's what we have been doing at Showtime Boxing for the last couple of years. No other network has done the quality of fights that Showtime has been doing. No other network is as committed to the sport as Showtime has been. 
Uh, putting a fight card in basic cable doesn't reposition the sport. Putting on great fights positions the sport. The best fight of the best, as Richard said. That's what Showtime is doing. That's what Mikey Garcia has been doing. Now, think about this. He had a layoff of over two years. He came back in 18 months. Four fights. Two title fights. Two different weight classes. Going for a world title in the fourth weight class. Something that only... Pacquiao and Marquez have done before. Um, that is some really good company. That's what great fighters do. Historically, what separates legendary fighters from very good fighters is the ones who challenge themselves, who travel across weight classes to challenge themselves up and down. And that's what Mikey is doing. But of course, there are two sides to this story. Those of you who've been paying attention have seen Sergey Lipinitz making a lot of noise on Showtime undercards lately. Uh, he has risen very quickly. If you look at his record, you would say 13-0, fighting Mikey Garcia. Uh, that sounds crazy. Um, but it's not. If you look at Lipinitz's record and the kind of competition he's faced, his last seven opponents have a combined record of 163-15. That's not something you usually see on a fighter with 13 fights. You don't see a fighter at 13 and 0 who's regularly sparring with Terrence Crawford and Ricky Burns and Ray Beltran. But that's what you see Sergey Lipin and so You know, Sergey, of course, is a kickboxing champion. Uh, is that going to help him in the fight against Michael Garcia? Surprisingly, maybe a little bit. He is a combat veteran. Whatever happens in the ring, he's seen it before. And it will be an exciting night, I guarantee that. Richard. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna just have a little bit of a Q&A with the participants and their trainers, and then we'll open it up to the press so that they can have uh, whatever questions you may have at the time for one-on-one, -on -one, an individual uh, as well. And uh, Alex is going to help us translate uh, for Sergey. So, uh, Mikey, let's just start with you. Uh, 18 months, you now have three world titles going for your fourth world title. Uh, how would you assess uh, what you have been able to accomplish, your last decision over Broner, uh, a four-time champion himself, um, and, and now that you get ready to fight Sergey. Well, first of all, you know it's uh, it's been a great comeback, great return to boxing. Um, everybody knows I did have a uh, layoff for over two years, and when I came back, I wanted to move fast. I wanted to uh, take on big challenges, take on world title fights, and uh, that's what we're doing so far. We, we're on track. You know, I want to reclaim what I think was somehow lost in that two-year layoff that I had. And this is what I need. I need to take on the challenges that uh, a lot of media or critics or boxing analysts might, you know, doubt. We took on Dijon, you know, in my second fight back, when a lot of people thought it might be too much. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I think slowly we're proving to everybody that, you know, I'm, I'm better than ever. And I'm, I'm really, you know, the fighter that's going to take on these, these big challenges in order to cement my legacy in the boxing. Well, in terms of your legacy, uh, should you win this fight at 140, uh, there's only two other guys who have been able to do that, Manny Pacquiao and Juan Manuel Marquez, to win at 126, 130, 135, and now 140. What would that outstanding accomplishment mean to you? Well, I, I wasn't aware of that. I, I know you aware of that? I wasn't aware. Of, it's not the reason why I was going for that. I know they won their titles. Um, I know there's other fighters who have won titles in, in four or more divisions, but I wasn't aware that from the featherweights to the uh, super lightweight, those two names were the only ones. I mean, that, that'd be a great, you know, accomplishment if I could be included in that discussion along, you know, Paulo Marcus, who for me is one of the best fighters that I've seen. And along Manny Pacquiao, same thing. I mean, that, that'd be another another win in itself. 
You're a humble guy. Do you, do you consider yourself in that same sentence? I think I think there's more still to uh, to accomplish in order to be uh, equally or parallel to those names. A lot of names have been thrown out. A lot of people want to fight you, and we've seen in the past several months all of them throw their hat into the ring to want the opportunity. What made you decide on fighting Sergey, an undefeated fighter, uh, a fighter who was 13 and 0? Uh, 10 knockouts and, and, and a tough guy. How, how did you pick him of all of these other guys uh, who would like a shot at you? We, we were looking at, at other names as well and when we're not able to secure somebody else, you know, um, for, for various reasons. Sometimes it's it's the uh, marketability or, or what they bring to the table is not exciting enough for me. A world champion like Sergio Lipinets is more exciting to me than just somebody else, you know, that's gonna be an easy title defense for me or, or just another fight. I want a challenge and this man presents that challenge. He's a bigger man, naturally. He's gonna be uh, very hungry, very motivated. He knows the victory over me, obviously, you know, launches his career to the very, very top. So that makes for an interesting fight. And of course, winning that fourth division championship for me is, is a big deal. Uh, my dad had always wanted a three division channel, and now I'm gonna give him a fourth title. So that's that's something that really excites me. He's a big puncher and 140 pounds. And does that concern you? Of course, there's concern. I'm fighting a bigger man, and um, that's something that we have to be careful and, and watch out for. And we'll come up with a good game plan. My brother, my dad will still uh, look at video and, and uh, decide what. You know, game plan we want to uh, uh, bring to uh, to the ring on, on February the 10th. But uh, of course, that size advantage that he holds will be uh, something to to watch out for. Robert can ask you next, but what about going to San Antonio? Uh, obviously, you're a Southern California man. Uh, you're taking your act on the road down to San Antonio. How about fighting from the Alamo Dome? Look, San Antonio has been great to boxing and uh, great to the Garcia team. We've had many successful fights in San Antonio, great wins in San Antonio, so we love it there. We have so many fans, and uh, I've always said, you know, Texas, the whole state has always been great when it comes to boxing fans. We uh, were honored to fight in San Antonio. And, and, and how do you prepare Mikey differently now at 140 pounds? Well, look, we know uh, Sergey is a, is a very, very dangerous uh, fighter very dangerous champion he's gonna come with everything i know he's hungry i know he wants to 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 become a, a big name great great fighter and that's by being mikey but you know mikey mikey's very smart in the ring we're gonna come up with a good game plan we're gonna have uh big spawn runners uh strong heavier guys uh which i already i already i'm already talking to a few that uh that are willing to come and, and help spar so you know the sparring is going to be a big uh a big uh, challenge for Mikey also because we're working him in some some real tough uh, solid sprint punch. Sergi, um, I know you understand a lot of English, but we're going to have Alex help you with the translation. Um, thank you for joining us here today. Uh, how have you been able to enjoy your your championship? You moved over from kickboxing, and now with just thirteen professional fights, you you have a world title. Uh, how have you enjoyed the transition, and, and what's it been like for you? Здравствуйте все, спасибо, что собрались здесь. Конечно, это было очень тяжело, тяжелые тренировки, хорошие тренера, хорошая команда, мне очень повезло. Конечно же, я очень рад, что так быстро смог стать чемпионом мира. И я очень хотел бы, конечно, драться с большими именами, такие как Майк Гарси, и вот мне... Теперь есть этот шанс, и я постараюсь сделать все для победы. Was not that easy, right? From kickboxing to boxing, he had to work hard. He had to stay in the gym most of the time. He had to deprive himself from 
a lot of them drum in the California and the United States of America who can put on the table in front of you. He put it all aside, he did everything he had to do, uh, went from one gym to another, train, spar with everybody, uh, whatever they put in front of him. He, had a, he got lucky that he had a great team around him, great trainers, great management, and um, he was always aiming for the stars. He wanted to be the best at what he does. And uh, Mikey Garcia is a great challenge and a great champion. Uh, he, and uh, he, he wants to be where Mikey is. That's, what, I mean, that's the only way to get there. You won this title just a month ago, and now just three months after that, you're going to fight a great champion like Mikey. Why, why didn't you take an easier fight? Why didn't you? What made you want to do this right now? Ну, если бы я взял легче бой, вы бы сказали, что я беру слабых соперников и выигрываю у них. И я взял э, серьезный бой, и вы спрашиваете, почему я не беру полегче что-нибудь. Здесь нет золотой середины, и поэтому... Well, it's a catch-22. If I would have taken an easy fight, everybody would have said, oh, you're taking an easy fight, you're fighting lesser opposition. I'm taking a great, I mean, great, great challenge, Mikey Garcia. And everybody is saying, either you're not ready or why are you taking that type of a fight? So it's basically, you can't please everybody. He's pleasing himself. He's trying to make where he's going in the shortcut, the fastest way possible. He had a lot of challenge in front of him before. He overcame it. And he's going to do that same thing again. As Stephen Espinosa mentioned, 163 and 15 are your past opponents, but you've also been able to spar with Hank Lundy and, and Terrence Crawford. Uh, how much have they prepared you, and will they prepare you for a guy like Mikey? Ну, хороший спарринг с хорошими соперниками, конечно же, очень быстро меня подняли на тот уровень, в котором я нахожусь. И я надеюсь, у меня и дальше будут очень хорошие спарринги, хорошие спарринг партнеры. Ну, это, по сути, ключ для всего, чтобы иметь хороший спарринг, чтобы вы могли сыграть вас и показать, где ваши руки есть. And that's going to prepare you for, for, for the bigger challenge. Every time he sparred with, with people, that, like you mentioned, uh, and then he realized where he is at at the game of boxing. He showed him, okay, you, you, you're not there yet. You're already there. It made him feel more confident for whatever fight was coming up, and uh, that's what made him to be. Well, you've got a great trainer, old buddy. Um, what holes do you see in Mikey that you think Sergey? Can, can try and take advantage of or is there such a thing does he just have to simply come up with a game plan that will be effective or are there holes in this man's uh, game well there's not many holes because he comes from a great family of boxing you know so we just have to uh, prepare for any and everything and this way that uh come fight night we have an answer for everything and if we have an answer for one thing we have two answers for something else but the key is that we just get a fuel point, you know, uh, from from the beginning to the end. I mean, there's there's uh, no ifs ands or buts about it. But you know, I just I, I believe that um, that night, or right now, I should say that uh, Sergey right now is on a mission. I know Mike is on a mission, and I respect it. I respect the fact that he's fighting Sergey, and I respect the fact that Sergey is fighting him. <coughs> I mean, if people were asking me, why would you fight Mikey Garcia? I'm like, well, plus the easier fights to me at 147. You know I mean, and he doesn't want to go to 47 yet. I mean, I really wanted the other Garcia. But Danny, I think that's an easier fight for us. But, you know, they didn't want to go up to 47. So then they want to stay at 140. So, you know, um, champions do what Sergey's doing, and that's fighting the best. And uh, Mikey's doing what champions do. They fight the best, you know. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. You know what I mean, but um, before uh, we go to another question, I want to say congratulations to you. 
And I would like to ask the media and everyone in here a question for that. But I, I want everyone to be honest. It's pretending to both fighters, but I need the honest opinion. Now, I know I'm not the most handsomest guy in the world, but these motherfuckers are ugly as hell. <laughs> We needed that, Richard. <laughs> Very good, buddy. With that, I think we'll open it up. I can't stop that. I just imagine we have to deal with it every day. <laughs> Did you translate that to him, or you don't want to talk about it? <laughs> Did you understand that, sir? <laughs> okay. That's a scary part. <laughs> next, time, next time he holds me for him, he might miss just <laughs> that accent. <laughs> Mikey thinks he's good looking. <laughs> bad photo. Good bad thing photo. Paid to think. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's open it up. I think we have a microphone out there. I want to acknowledge the great Sam Watson and Dean Watson, Brandon, Marcus out here. <laughs> Who's got a question? There's a microphone right here. Lance, Lance Pugmire. The LA Times, great writer, Chronicles of Sport. Hi guys, thank you for <clears throat> uh, Mikey, from your perspective, what, when you weighed everything, why was going this route better than the other route that uh, Golden Boy had previously offered? Um, Golden Boy and I were in discussions to secure the uh, Linares fight, but uh, they themselves also suggested that we could wait and that we both take an uh, intermediate uh, match. They feel the, the financial aspect of the sport would be better if we wait, um, maybe sometime in the summer. And then when that's out of the you know table, what what else is next for me? I mean, you know, we we looked at other other options, but. Uh, the, the opportunity to become a four division world champion obviously excited me more and, and, and that's why we're here. Do you stay at 140 or does this give you the flexibility to consider going back and forth, whoever, wherever the biggest fights are? What is, what is your thinking? No, I, I still plan on, on uh, fighting Linares and I would love to fight him at 135. Um, he says he's going to go to 40, but I, I would prefer we fight at 35. So. This is the, the task in, in, in front of me first. I gotta get through this um, before I can, you know, look forward to to other fights. But I still plan on, on getting that fight. Um, hopefully, we can, we can secure that in, in this upcoming year. Thank you. Thank you, I guess you're doing like a question for both of you guys. What's your prediction for this fight? Yeah, both of you. Ну, конечно, на 10 без травм закончится. Все, я думаю, что я выиграл, думаю, Майки, думаю, что он выиграет, и мы постараемся показать красивый бой. Ну, здесь не загадывать нельзя, потому что это бокс. Постараемся все сделать для победы. Well, I believe that I'm gonna win. Mikey believes he's gonna win. Uh, and, uh, everything will unravel when we step in the ring. Like, one thing that we can guarantee right now, sitting at that table, that it's gonna be a great fight, no matter what it is. I also think it's gonna be a very good fight. I, I, uh... I think the the challenge for me, like I said, I'm fighting a bigger man, and, and uh, on fight night, um, you know, the, the size advantage that he holds over me might be enough to uh, make it that much more of an exciting fight. And it, uh, it it'll be interesting to see how how well I can adapt to the size. Just like when I fight even Broner, he he was definitely the bigger man in the ring that night. So I have to make adjustments in order to overcome those challenges. But, I mean, we're, we're fighting an NFL world champion who knows that a victory over me would definitely, you know, launch his career to their very ceiling. And, uh, you know, that just makes for, for a better fight. It makes for excitement. And that's, that's what I want. That's what we want to be able to give the fans. 
Uh, question for Sergey: As the defending champion, do you feel like you're receiving the respect level from the fans that will be tuning into this fight that are more familiar with Mikey Garcia? And for Mikey, going into this fight, since you have another opportunity just on the horizon, is it a distraction or is it that much more of a driving force to be successful this week? Да, конечно, я смотрел бои, это мой вес, я все смотрю бои свои, свои весовые категории, хороший боец, и he weighed 140 pounds. That's his territory. And that's his belt. And uh, he's up against an excellent fight, fighter that never lost to anybody. And uh, he knows what he's facing when he steps in that ring. He'll be ready for that. No problem. As far as the uh, question regarding the distraction, I don't, I don't see a distraction. I'm focused on, on the upcoming fight, February the 10th. I know that there's other fights that could, uh, you know, get done later in the year, but my main focus right now is February 10th against Lipinets. That's that's the target. Um, after that, then we'll see what's what's available. Even though we would love to see that Lamar's fight or another unification match or or something like that, um, I can't I can't let that distract me. You know, and, and I stay focused. You know, on my fight. Um, throughout the entire camp and, and throughout the fight, you know, you're going to see that I'm, I'm always very, very focused. Mikey, do you think that you're in a position now with Floyd having retired? Uh, clearly, Canelo Alvarez is, is very popular. Um, but do you feel as though since you're bilingual and you have an opportunity to now win these four titles that you could rise up and, and, and be the face and, and the man in this sport? Well, I think the... the uh Possibility is definitely there, and, and I think uh, we're on the right track to, to accomplish that. And I don't know if another fighter right now that is undefeated and, and going after the fourth division title, I, I, I don't know, I may be wrong, but I just don't see it. I mean, there's, there's other champions, there's other champions who are unified champions or two divisional champions, but I, I'd be, you know, in a, in a class of its own with fourth division. And do you think being humble? And courteous and gracious is a good way to go about that after what we've seen with other fighters who have been much more outspoken? Or do you think you have to augment and change your your public style and approach? No, I, I think there's room for, for someone like myself. I, mean, I think, you know, obviously being loud and, and, and you know, um, I don't know, maybe that sells, that also sells, that sells tickets, that, you know, helps with ratings, but. I'm not that guy. I, I think uh, I do my talking in the ring. I take on you know big challenges, and I you know beat my opponents convincingly. I don't leave, leave doubt, and I think that's what the fans are attracted to, and that's that's why people show me that love and that that respect. And uh, as, as long as I keep doing what I'm doing right now, I think we're on a very good track to accomplish that 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 starting that, that everybody says I could actually reach. All right, Richard, thank you all for having us. We look forward to Saturday, February 10th. It's going to be in San Antonio. It's going to be live on Showtime. And uh, we thank Stephen Espinosa for putting together this great match, along with Ring Star and Al Hamlet. And we look forward to the big fight. Thank you all. These guys will be around. Yeah, yeah.